If you're wondering how jojoba oil can improve hair loss and help regrow healthy hair, this is the video for you. Make sure to stay tuned to the end because I'm going to show you a completely unconventional way to actually improve the effectiveness of jojoba oil. So stay tuned. Hey guys and welcome to the Hair Guard YouTube channel. If you're new here, we make science-backed videos all about how you can combat hair loss and regrow healthy hair. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. What we're going to learn about today in this video is I'm going to tell you what jojoba oil is. We're going to look at how jojoba can reduce inflammation. I'm going to talk about its antibacterial properties. We're going to look at the safety of jojoba oil. Then we're going to talk about how you can improve the effectiveness. And then finally, we're going to look at how you can find high quality jojoba oil for hair. First things first, what is jojoba oil? Technically not an oil at all, jojoba is a combination of long chain monounsaturated liquid wax esters. This structure is nearly identical to the structure of naturally occurring sebum, which is the oil produced by sebaceous glands in humans. Jojoba oil is taken from the seeds of a jojoba plant, which originated in the southern region of the United States and in the northern region of Mexico. It is not typically sold in its natural form, but instead the oil is processed to a point of it having a transparent yellow look. Jojoba has been a staple ingredient in the cosmetic industry for years. Now, will jojoba oil really help with hair loss? So the chemical makeup of jojoba oil is so close to that of oils which naturally occur on the scalp that it may prove beneficial in overall hair health. Now, what do we mean by that? Well. First things first, jojoba can reduce inflammation. Inflammation is a natural autoimmune response which is triggered when the body has been injured, becomes ill or has been invaded by things such as bacteria or a virus. The immune system responds by sending white blood cells to the area of origination which then leads to inflammation and soreness as the white blood cells do their work. Such a response protects the body but when the inflammation is chronic it can cause problems. In addition, there are certain conditions in which the immune system will attack the body without provocation. For example, arthritis and alopecia. Now, this can also occur as a result of DHT sensitivity, which is believed to be the main cause of hair loss in men and women with androgenetic alopecia. When the androgen DHT attaches to the androgen receptors at the hair follicles, an immune response takes place. This leads to inflammation of the follicles, which triggers miniaturization and eventual hair fall. Now, this process can be reversed, and one way to do so is in the short-term process is with the use of anti-inflammatory treatments. In 2005, researchers from Egypt wanted to know whether jojoba liquid wax, or JLW, had an anti-inflammatory capabilities. Using a variety of experimental models, researchers were able to show that JLW reduced um, the following three things that you can see on the screen now, which I'm not going to try and pronounce. Now, perhaps the most compelling evidence was that JLW was able to reduce the levels of prostaglandin, uh, which is E2, which is a lipid associated with inflammation, and tumor necrosis factor alpha, or TNF alpha, which has also been linked with inflammation. Now, when applied directly to the scalp, Jojoba may be able to relieve inflammation and irritation associated with androgenetic alopecia and other causes of hair loss, such as fungal infections. Also, jojoba is a proven antibacterial. While not the most common cause of hair loss, bacterial infections can prove particularly nasty if they do take hold. Such infections that may affect the scalp include folliculitis, which is a generalized inflammation of the follicle. It can occur for various reasons, Though the bacteria that you can see on the screen now is one of the most common. As folliculitis sets in, an increase in hair fall will be noticed. This occurs as the inflammation pushes the hair from the follicle prematurely and makes it difficult for new hairs to form or develop. If allowed to continue, it can cause permanent damage and irreversible balding. Now, while you should absolutely seek out medical attention if you suspect a bacterial infection of the scalp, there are things you can do to keep them at bay once it's been properly treated. This includes applying jojoba, which is an anti, a proven antibacterial, to the scalp. But how effective is jojoba? 
Well, it was a 2016 study that tested antibacterial effects of jojoba on four different bacterial strains. And we can see those on the screen right now. As a positive control, chlorhexhydine, which is a disinfectant commonly used prior to surgery, was added to a separate set of bacterial cultures. Now, while chlorhexidine proved to have a larger zone of inhibition, which was to be expected, jojoba also showed itself to be quite effective at inhibiting the four bacterial strains. And one of these strains is even most often implicated in folliculitis. While further testing would be welcome, these preliminary results show promise for jojoba as an effective and easy to obtain antibacterial agent. So, is jojoba oil actually safe? Well, jojoba oil is practically harmless to everyone. The non-toxic, non-allergenic, non-comedogenic oil does not clog your pores and is not known to trigger any allergic reactions. That being said, with all supplements prior to use on your scalp, it's recommended that you first test on a small area of skin. If you experience itchiness, hives, rash, redness or hotness, avoid further application. And women who are pregnant should also consult with their medical professional prior to use. So, as promised, I'm going to show you some ways now that you can improve the effectiveness of using jojoba oil for hair growth. Now, if you do choose to use jojoba or jojoba containing hair products, you'll want to be sure that you're using it to its greatest benefit. And here are two ways that you can do so. The first thing you can do is add it to your scalp massage. Scalp massage is a technique that uses your fingertips or a specialized tool to stimulate the scalp and gently stretch the skin. This has proven benefits, though the main one is its ability to increase hair thickness. This was proven in a 2016 study which showed that regular massage sessions can increase hair thickness by inducing stretching forces. This increases blood flow to the area and softens the skin, but it also stretches the dermal papilla cells. Now, to perform your scalp massage, what you do is you just get your thumb, middle and index fingers, place each hand on either side of your head, and as you apply pressure, begin to move your hands in circular motions. Continue in this area for one to two minutes and then make your ways towards the crown. Continue the circular movements on the crown for one to two minutes and then slowly begin to move towards the hairline. Bring your fingertips first to the center, then slowly work your way out to the temples. You continue to go back and forth between the centers of the hairline and temples for one to two minutes. Then bring your hands to the back of the scalp and continue massaging for again one to two minutes. You can always go back to previous places, especially if you feel you didn't get them thoroughly enough the first time around. For best results, we recommend performing this for at least 10 minutes per day. And the next thing is to apply it after microneedling. Now microneedling is a therapeutic technique that uses a specialized tool to induce wounding. What I'm gonna do for you right now is I'm gonna link for you in the description a, a link that you can claim your very own free derma roller. So if you are interested in trying out a derma roller, click the link in the description. Now it's a specialized tool that is used to induce wounding. It can be used almost anywhere on the body, though it's most often used on the scalp and the face. These tiny wounds um, experience the usual healing process, which includes inflammation, proliferation, and maturation. This process helps to produce new skin cells, which are necessary for new hair growth and develops collagen. But that's not all. Microneedling has actually been shown to induce hair growth in men suffering from androgenetic alopecia. For example, this 2013 study of 100 men showed that microneedling worked better than minoxidil alone. Perhaps you're wondering, won't well, I need to visit a doctor or other professional to receive microneedling treatment? Well, the answer is no. And there are tools that you can use at home, just like the derma roller you can claim in the description. Once you've chosen your tool, bring it to the area of hair thinning and apply gentle pressure. If using a roller, roll over the area in different directions, four to five times. If using a stamp, just place the tool in different directions upon each pressing and repeat four to five times. And that's pretty much it. You've just completed your first microneedling session. We recommend doing it once, maybe twice per week, but definitely not more than twice per week. Uh, and you may experience some discomfort during the procedure, and that is totally normal, uh, but it should never be painful. Now to conclude, jojoba oil is not a miracle treatment for hair loss or damaged hair, but it can be a beneficial addition to your hair care routine. 
Jojoba's composition is quite similar to that of sebum, which means it can be used to promote scalp health and strong hair. And its various other properties, such as anti-inflammatory and antibacterial, can also provide benefit to those who want to use jojoba for hair growth. So guys, that's what we wanted to share with you today on jojoba oil. Don't forget, if you want your free derma roller, click the link in the description. Don't forget to hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.